previously we were doing hypothesis testing for a population mean when sigma squared was known. So when sigma squared was known, then we could say that our test statistic was x bar, and then we would wonder what is our sampling distribution for that test statistic under the null hypothesis. So we figured out that the sampling distribution um, would be a normal with mean mu, variance sigma squared over n under the null hypothesis, uh, where mu was given by the null hypothesis. Okay, so this would be the same thing as, we would get the same results is, as if we had a test statistic of x bar minus mu under the null divided by sigma over root n. So in other words, we could have had a test stat of x bar with this sampling distribution, or we could have had a test statistic of x bar minus mu over sigma over root n. And its sampling distribution would have been a standard normal distribution. So either way, we would have gotten the same results. In other words, we would get identical p-values whether we had x bar as our test statistic or whether we had x bar minus mu over sigma over root n. All right, so this again was all when we had sigma squared being known. But of course, most of the time, if we don't know the mean, then we won't know the variability either. So it's useful to think about how do we do hypothesis testing when we do not know the variance sigma squared. So hopefully this reminds you of when we did confidence intervals for a mean when we did not know sigma squared. So remember from those videos, we said that if we had a random sample of size n from a normal distribution with mean mu variance sigma squared, with both mu and sigma squared being unknown, then our sample mean minus our population mean divided by s over root n would have a t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. All right, so we are going to use this when we talk about hypothesis testing for a mean when sigma squared is unknown. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about that. So we're assuming sigma squared is unknown, then a test statistic that we could use, instead of using this test statistic, which we could use when sigma was known, instead of using this test statistic, let's go ahead and use this test, test statistic. Okay, so if our null hypothesis is mu is equal to some value mu naught, so like mu naught could be like 60 or something like that, then our test statistic is going to be our sample mean minus the value of mu under the null hypothesis divided by s over root n. So we subtract off the value of mu under the null hypothesis because we assume that mu is, um, that mu is equal to mu naught. In other words, we assume that the null hypothesis is true until we have evidence otherwise. So then we have our test statistic that's here, and then we need to know what is the sampling distribution of our test statistic under the null hypothesis. And this tells us that our um, sampling distribution for the test statistic under the null is going to be a t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. All right, so hopefully you see where this is coming from. Before we had a test statistic of x bar minus mu over sigma over root n, and its sampling distribution was a standard normal. Now we're talking about mu being unknown, so we use x bar minus mu under the null, divided by sample standard deviation over root n and that has a t distribution under the null hypothesis with n minus one degrees of freedom. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a hypothesis testing example where both mu is unknown and sigma squared is unknown. Okay, so I just made this up, but maybe we could say that Pizza Hut claims that each slice of pepperoni pizza has, on average, four slices of pepperoni. And maybe you eat a lot of pizza and you're wondering, okay, is this actually true? Are there really four pieces of pepperoni on each slice on average? All right, so then the null hypothesis would be what Pizza Hut claims. Mu, which is the mean number of slices of pepperoni on a slice of pizza, is equal to four. And then the alternative would be mu is not equal to four. So if we're just testing are there actually four slices of pepperoni on each slice of pizza? Then our alternative would be this two-sided one, mu is not equal to four. If you were thinking like they put too few slices of pepperoni on, then you would change this not equal to sign to a less than sign. All right, so we have our hypotheses. 
mu naught here is four. So say that you go out and you randomly, uh, randomly sample nine slices of pizza. So n equals nine. And then you calculate x bar. And you find it is 4.3 slices of pepperoni. And our sample standard deviation is 1.2 slices of pepperoni. So then we can go ahead, plug all those numbers into this form for our test statistic here. So x bar was 4.3, so plug that in. The value of mu under the null hypothesis is 4, so plug that in. S was 1.2, and then n was 9, because we had 9 slices of pizza that we sampled. All right, so our test statistic then is equal to 0.75. All right, so we have our test statistic that we get from our particular sample, and we want to calculate the probability of getting a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than 0.75 given that the null hypothesis is true. In other words, given that the average number of slices of pepperoni on a slice of pizza is equal to four. Okay, so we need to know the sampling distribution of our test statistic. So here's our test statistic, and we know that the sampling distribution is a T distribution with N minus one degrees of freedom. So we have eight degrees of freedom here under the null hypothesis. All right, so let's draw out Here's our sampling distribution. It's a T distribution with eight degrees of freedom. This is centered at zero. And then let's draw in our test statistic, which is 0.75. All right, so we know that this shaded area here is half of our p-value. Because remember, we have a two-sided alternative, so that shaded area is just half our p-value. So we need to find that area, double it, and that's our p-value. Okay. So we can go ahead and calculate our p-value. Our p-value, we said, is just going to be double this area. So it's two times the probability that a t-distribution with eight degrees of freedom is greater than our test statistic, which is 0.75. So then we can go out and use a table, or we could use um, pt in the pt and r to find out that our p-value is 0.4747. All right, so it looks like because we have a pretty big p-value, we don't have very much evidence against the null hypothesis. So in most settings, we would not be rejecting the null hypothesis here. So in other words, we did not find evidence that the mean number of pepperonis on a slice of pizza is something different than four. So we'll just go ahead and say, okay, we don't have evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So, um, We'll just keep living in this world that says mu equals four. In other words, the mean number of pepperonis on a slice of pizza is four.